Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the virtual worship service from the Fallen Run Missionary Baptist Church here in the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us on this glorious uh, Sunday morning. I am grateful and I'm thankful to the Lord that he has allowed us to get together once again. It is a marvelous day, a day that the Lord has made uh, that we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, thank our family uh, for the Falling Run Church. Thank our friends and our supporters for being here with us on today. Thank you for joining us on our live stream as well as our Facebook. And later today, uh, it will be up on our YouTube uh, channel. And want to just thank you today for this opportunity. Please join me in prayer. Father, thank you for another worship opportunity. Heavenly Father, as I stand here in this sanctuary and I meet with my brothers and sisters in their homes, whether they're on their, in their cars, whether they're uh, in their job, on their jobs, wherever they may be, Heavenly Father, we now invite you to let us gather together and touch and agree from a distance, God. We pray now, God, that your presence, your peace, and your power will be felt wherever we are. God, we ask that you would allow sanctuaries to be made in homes wherever your people are today. Let, let your anointing be felt all over, God. God, we're living in such uncertain times. Heavenly Father, earthquakes being felt this morning, even here, an earthquake being felt this morning, even here in North Carolina, right here in Fayetteville. We pray, God, your blessings upon us and remind us, God, that we are living in these challenging times, but changing times, uncertain times, but we serve a God who changes not. Bless us, God. Let us feel the anointing today. We love you. We praise you and adore you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, welcome this morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank God for each of you. Thank God for our media team who provides this opportunity, these platforms that we gather around, whether you're gathering on our live stream, Facebook. Uh, uh, thank you again for joining us on this Lord's Day morning. To our uh, leadership of our church, to all of you, welcome this morning. Again, I want to thank you for all that you do for us here at the Falling Run Missionary Baptist Church. I am grateful, I'm thankful um, that I'm um, privileged to serve you, privileged to be your leader, your shepherd during these times that we find ourselves, that we find ourselves in. Um, and I wanna thank you. Uh, thank you for, uh, we had an opportunity this week together as a church family on Zoom a couple of times. Um, we know that we're preparing to go back to school, our kids are. And we are talking and just collaborating with parents and grandparents, preparing for that so that we can come alongside and assist our parents. We're looking forward um, to the collaboration. Parents, we're praying for you. Students who may be watching, we're praying for you. Recognize that some of our college students have gone back to school. We want to make sure that we stay in touch with you. That's going to look a little different. And we want to make sure that we reach out to you in various, various ways during this semester and the semesters to come to make sure that there's a connectivity between your church and you. We want you to know that we're praying with you. Be safe if you need something. We're going to make sure that we are um, reaching out uh, beyond the scholarship, beyond other things that we do, the stipend that we give. We're going to make sure that we um, reaching out to you again. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank those persons who have assisted this during this summer to make sure that you had meals, uh, students had meals. Thank you. Thank our church staff. Thank you for all that you do. Again, all of our leadership, we are grateful and thankful to you. Um, again, I am uh, continue to practice social distancing. Please wear a mask or face covering as you're going out. As you have noticed, um, the COVID-19, the coronavirus, the numbers are spiking, particularly in our area. I need you to be safe. I need you to be safe, to be cognizant of your, of your surroundings as you're going out. You have to go out. I recognize that. You have to go out to um, the grocery store. You have to go out to your doctor's appointment and other places. But as you go out, please be safe. Please be safe. Um, um, continue to have distance among, uh, with, between you and others. Uh, go out, be safe. 
uh, continue to wash your hands, continue to wear your mask, continue to be safe. Also, it is warm, it is summer. If you're out, out walking, if you're gonna do that, in the mo do that in the mornings or the afternoon, make sure that you're staying hydrated, taking care of yourselves, eating properly, drinking fluids, um, take, uh, making sure that you're, you're looking after your caloric um, intake, that you are doing what you need to do to take care of yourselves. So again, take care of yourselves. If you are living alone, call. Uh, if you need something, let us know that we can help and assist you so that um, you would not have to get out if you do uh, as, as less, less as possible. So again, we are gonna get through this together. And I wanna thank again all of our ministries who are reaching out we're trying to do it the best we can to reach out. If we have not made contact with you, please um, let us know. We're trying to do the very best we can. And again, I want to thank all of you for what you're doing. With that being said, I want to thank you for your financial contributions. Thank you for your offerings. Thank you for your prayers. As I say weekly, if you're not able to, I recognize this is a this is a. Um, uh, unprecedented time. These are unprecedented times. People are, are struggling. I recognize that. So I, I don't want you to feel pressured. I need, particularly now, school is going back. You've got to uh, send college kids back. You have to uh, pay some bills and do all of those things. So if you're not able to, God's going to continue to take care of his church. I need for you to take care of yourself. I need for you to take care of your families. But I want to thank those of you who are able to do what you've been doing. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your continued support of your church. But again, those who have not been able to, don't feel bad. Um, I need you to take care of your families. You just continue to support, continue to pray, continue to tune in on Sundays, Wednesdays, and be a part. Because we're a family, and that's what families do. Families take up the slack. Um, so again, take care of your children, take care of your responsibilities at home, pay your bills, make sure those things are taken care of. The Lord is going to continue to take care of his house, amen, his storehouse. And I want to thank those who have been able to give. If you're able to give, you may give through Givelify. You, um, you may give through our church website at followingchurch.org. You may go there and um, give there. Um, you may also give um, by mailing it in to P.O. Box 1179. Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28302, or you may um, come by the church office and drop it off here at the church office. Please call. Our church I was a little modified. So please, again, thank you for your giving. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for all that you're doing. But yet again, if you are not able to at this moment, please do not feel pressured. Know that God will continue to take care of his church. I love you and with the love of the Lord. And I want you to be well. I want you to be well physically. I want you to be well mentally as well as spiritually. And, and I want to say this. Please take care of your mental health. Take care of your mental health. This is, you know, it's stressful it's on all of us. Please take care of your mental health. Every now and then, just get out, drive through the countryside, whatever you have to do. Take care of your mental health. Amen. Take, just decompress. Take care of your mental health. You may be in the, all day with the kids. Just step back, go outside, do something. Take care of your mental health. It is important um, that you have a holistic approach physically, mentally, and spiritually. I'm trying to feed you spiritually the, the word of God on Wednesdays, Sundays, the prayers during the morning, those scripture readings. I need, I'm trying to do that. Um, I'm trying to take care of myself as well, physically, mentally, and spiritually. I need for you to do that. I need you to take care of yourself physically as well as mentally. Uh, I'm going to try to help you spiritually, but I need for you to work on your mental and your physical health. If you please do that, I really will appreciate it. Again, thank you. Thank each of you for joining us today. To God be the glory. Great things he's done. And the final thing I want to say to those who are recovering from sickness, those recovering from surgeries, I greet you this morning. You are in our prayers, our sick and shut in. Know that we are yet praying for you. Uh, those who may be in nursing homes and convalescent homes, we're yet praying for you. And those uh, family members who are not able to physically go see your loved ones, I know that is stressful. We're praying for you. To those bereaved families, we have bereaved members in our church. Uh, we are praying for you. Teresa Vincent, we want you to know that we are praying for you in the loss of your brother-in-law. We want you and William to know, as I've told you, but we are praying for you um, as you prepare to finalize your brother-in-law on Tuesday. And others, 
uh, who have lost loved ones, we are praying for you. And those who are recovering from sickness and diagnoses that you're waiting on, we are praying with you and for you. Again, thank you. May God's blessings upon you. To my family today, Roxy Jalen, um, we love you and we praise God for each of you. May again, thank you to our, again, to our our um, media team, thank you for all that you do for us here at the Falling Run Church. To all of you, may God's blessings continue to be upon each and every one of you. It is um, indeed a pleasure and a privilege to be here this morning. So if you want to give, you may give now. Um, you can go online and do that. You may give through the week, however you want to do that. Again, thank you. I'm privileged and uh, pleased to have an opportunity to be here with you on today. There is a word, there is a word from the Lord, there's a word from the Lord, there's a word from the Lord uh, um, this morning as you're turning to 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, I um, ask that you would turn there, I want to thank our media again team for what they're doing. I do invite you to join me on Wednesday at 12 noon as well as on Wednesday evening at 12, uh, at 7 p.m. for our Bible study, midweek Bible study. We invite you to be a part of that. From 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, I'm reading from the New International Version, the New International Version, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Listen as these words shall speak to us this morning, 2 Kings chapter 4, and I need you to pray with me and for me on today. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elijah, your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys and his slaves. Elijah replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elijah said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask, just, don't ask for just a few. Don't ask just for a few. Don't ask just for a few. Don't ask for just for a few. Don't ask just for a few. Don't ask just for a few. <clears throat> Don't ask just for a few. And she went, shut the door behind, pour into all of the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons, and they brought the jars to, him, to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, and she said to her son, bring me another one, but he replied, there's not a jar left, then, all, then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your, son, and you and your sons can live on what is left. From these words this morning, I want to preach from the subject, when you are in need of a miracle, when you are in need of a miracle, when you are in need of a miracle. My brothers and sisters, what we discover in this text is a woman caught in the net of life's contradictions. This woman is in the midst of a crisis. She's coming face to face with the challenges and contradictions of, a circumst of circumstantial hardships and crises. One thing is clear, she does not know what to do. Uh, again, if you, and I encourage you to read 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, it's been said that desperate times call for desperate measures. This woman, this widow, is in the midst of such times. These were desperate times which called for 
desperate measures. We read in verse 1 that her husband is dead. And it's very significant that you don't read beyond that, that you don't read too quickly uh, 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 beyond verse number 1. Verse 1 reminds us and tells us that her husband is dead. Think about it. Think about it. Uh, she was a widow in a patriarchal society. She was a widow in a society where a woman was devalued. She was a widow in a society that a woman depended upon a man or for her survival. She was a woman, a widow, a man without a husband, and the text says she has two children. Uh, 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 which she, she lived in a patriarchal society which means she lived in a society in which the rights of men were privileged and the rights of women were ignored. She is in a vulnerable position. We, we don't know exactly why she's in a financial crisis. We don't know what led up to uh, why she does not have any money. We don't know what happened, why she needs money. She needs a miracle in her life. But we do know that she is in a desperate situation. Thus, we understand that de desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, uh, we, we don't know what happened. We don't know why she is in the predicament that she's in. But it does say in verse 1 that it's his creditors, the creditors of her husband who, who's coming to get and take her sons. M maybe it was something her husband did. Maybe it was something she did. Or maybe, just maybe, just like in the modern world, creditors were taking advantage of people in vulnerable positions. To be a widow in the ancient world was to be in a vulnerable predicament. She's lost her husband. Come walk with me. The, 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 uh, come, come, come walk with me. She has lost her husband. She's lost her money. And now she's in danger of losing her children. For, for those of you who are mothers, perhaps you can identify with the gravity of this situation. L look at it. She's a widow. She does not have any money. The creditors are threatening to come and take everything that she has left. She has a house. Uh, she has meager possessions. And not only that, but she has a children. And if you could not pay the debts back then, they would take the next best thing, and that would be your children, to come and work off the debts. This woman, this widow, has lost her husband. She has lost her money, and now she is in danger of losing her children. Uh, 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 but, but, but you know, a good mother, uh, a, a good mother would do any and everything, amen. A good mom, a good woman would do any and everything that she can to protect her home and her children. I, I wish I could get some folk out there to walk with me just for a few moments. This woman in the text, look at the text. This woman, this woman, this widow woman, this nameless woman, amen, comes to the prophet Elisha. E Elisha, amen, who was the successor to the prophet Elijah. This woman comes to Elijah uh, with a request. She doesn't know what to do. She, she does not ask for money. She does not know. She does not ask for a favor. She, she, she's in need of a miracle. She needs God to do something on her behalf. <laughs> Uh, well, this I need to I need to raise a question with us this morning. What do you do when you are in need of a supernatural need move from God? What do you do when you are in need of a miracle? <laughs> 
I, I think this morning, brothers and sisters, there are a few answers to this question in our text. Uh, what do you do when you are in need of a miracle? This woman shows us how we should respond when we are in need of a miracle. You all going to walk with me this morning? F first of all, according to the text, the first thing that you and I should do when we find ourselves in the need, in need of a miracle, the first thing that we should do, according to the text, is ask God for help. You need to write that down. When you find yourself in a, in a situation, in a precarious situation, in a situation where you don't know what to do, where it's dire, where it's beyond repair, where it looks like you cannot make it, the first thing you need to learn to do is ask God for help. Right here in the text. Right, right, right here in the text. Look, look, look back at verse number one. Look, look back at verse number one. Verse number one, verse number one, it says, in the, in the New International Version, it says that she cried out. That this woman cried out. Uh, it, it, it literally means to appeal for help. To cry out in this context means that she goes to Elijah, who is God's representative on earth. Elijah in the text represents God. She goes to Elijah and says, Elijah, uh, uh, Elisha, Elisha, not Elijah, but Elisha, my husband, your servant, who revered the Lord, is dead. She cries out to him. She, 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 she appeals for help. Uh, when, you, when you need God to perform a miracle, when you need God to do something supernatural in your life, the first thing that you need to learn to do is ask for help. Uh, 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 look at it. Look at it. it uh, to, to ask for help, to cry out. Uh, here literally means to appeal for help. To appeal for help, to cry out, occurs eight times in 2 Kings. It almost every time it means to appeal for help. To cry out is to say, God, I need you to come to my rescue. I, I wonder, are there at least five of you out there this morning who needs the Lord to come to your rescue. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. When you say, when you, when you cry out, you're really saying, God, I need you to come to my rescue. Uh, in, in coming to Elijah the prophet, she is in effect seeking out God himself through Elijah. And she is saying, I need help. We, we know that her husband revered the Lord. Her husband was in ministry. He was a part of the school of prophets. She came from a good family. <laughs> they had done everything right. But now all of this is gone. Her husband is gone. Now she's asking, she's pleading She's crying out to God for help. Is, is this the first or last person in Scripture who cries out for God to help them? Is this the last person in Scripture who asks God and appeals to God for divine help? Of course not. I see the prophet Isaiah in the midst of a divided kingdom when Israel was separated from Judah, I see that the prophet in the midst of a crisis in Isaiah chapter 64, he says, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down to make your name known among your enemies. He's desperate for God to intervene. I, I, I see blind Bartimaeus in ja Mark chapter 10, verse 47. Uh, he's, he's desperate. B blind Bartimaeus, amen, uh, uh, says he was sitting by the side of the road. He hears 
that Jesus was passing by. And do you know what he says when Jesus passed by? He said, son of David, have mercy on me. That sounds to me like he was appealing to the Lord to help him. This woman is a part of a long line of people who recognize that God is the source of their help and consolation. I wish I had some witnesses out there. Let me tell you something. God is the source of our help. God is the source of our help. And to cry out to God for help is the norm in scripture, not the exception. So when you are in trouble, when you don't know what to do, you ought to ask God for help. Uh, uh, there was a story once that a little girl got lost in the wilderness uh, in the woods and she was wandering through the woods and, and, and all of a sudden she started she started saying her ABCs and, 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 and a little man came upon her and said little girl what are you doing she says I'm praying no she, and he said no you're not praying you're saying your ABC she said no I'm praying uh, uh, she said no he said no you're saying your ABC she said I'm praying my mama told me that God is a grammarian he can take your consonant and your vowels and put them together and he can know what you're talking about there are some times that life can become so burdensome there's some time that life can become so tremendous that you can't put amen a prayer together there's some time you don't know what to say and all you can just say is help I wonder is there anybody out there that you are so burdened right now sometimes you don't know what to pray you don't know how to pray I got a prayer for you help when life gets you down you ought to just say help when your health gets you down you ought to just say help yeah 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 look look at the text when this woman when this woman this woman goes to uh, Elisha and he says she cries to him she says help I need some help she cries to the Lord she cries to the Lord. I, I raised this question with us this morning. To where do you go? To whom or to what do you go when life tumbles in on you? We, we run to all kinds of things other than God. We run to the advice of social media, friends and influencers, we run to distractors, uh, and, and in doing so, we actually cut ourselves off from God. <laughs> the, the problem is, brothers and sisters, that we look to God as the last resort when God should be our first resort, when we don't know what to do, when we need a miracle from God. We, we, we should cry out and ask God for help in the text. In spite of her pain, her problems, and her lack of possibilities, the widow in the text still looked up to God for the help that she needed. I'm trying to help someone out there. Even though she could not see a way out, she knew that she could not see everything. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Even though she did not understand everything she was facing, she believed that God cared and that he could do something about her situation. That's all I'm trying to help you with this morning, that you need to understand that when you are in a crisis, that when your back is against the wall, you need to ask God for help. It may, to you, it looks impossible. To you, it looks like it cannot be done. But the woman in the text, was he, she goes and cries to the Lord, and in essence, she's saying, I need help. Uh, uh, you need to understand this morning that God is still in the miracle performing business. Uh, are there at least three or four out there this morning who knows without a shadow of a doubt that God is in the miracle performing business? Uh, uh, I'm trying to help someone sitting on your sofa. I'm trying to help someone sitting in the kitchen. Or perhaps lying in your bed when you need God to perform a miracle in your life. Can I tell you what you need to do? Simply 
ask. This woman goes to the Lord and she cried out. She goes to Elijah, the prophet, who was God's representative, and she cried out. Well, the second thing to do when you are in need of a miracle, right here in the text, uh, when you are in need of a miracle, listen and in obey the, the directions of God, right? Right here in the text. Right, right here in the text. When you are in need of a miracle, listen and obey the directions of God. The, the, the woman goes to the prophet. She asks the prophet. Uh, uh, the, the prophet asks her, what, what do you need? What, what do you need? What, 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 what can I do for you? She, 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 he, he goes and he asks the, pro the woman, what can I do for you? What, what can I do for you? And, and the prophet, and, and, and she, she told him, and, and look, look at verse number three. Right here in verse number three, she said, what do you have? She says, all I have is a small jar. Look, look at it. Look, I, I don't want you to miss that. I, I don't want you to miss that. She says, all I have is a small jar. Look, look, look at it. Look, look at it. I, I don't want you to miss that. It, it is very key. All, all I have is a small jar. All I have is a small jar. Jar. Don't, don't, don't miss that. It's very significant. I, I want us to look at that. All I have is a small jar. All I have. She, she said, tell me, what, what do you have in your house? Nothing except a small jar of olive oil. That's, that's what she said. A small jar of olive oil. Uh, it, it would be equivalent of about having one serving of oil. She said, that's all I got. She says, then, then Elijah asked her to do a strange thing. <laughs> Instead of, him, of her of asking her to bring the oil to him, do you know what he asked her to do right, right here in the text? He asked her to go around to her neighbors. Don't miss this. Pick up some more jars. Then take them to her house and pour that little bit of oil that she has in those jars. Don't, don't, don't miss this. Listen, it, it, when, when you are in need of a miracle, when you need God to do something in your life, listen and obey the instructions of the Lord. I don't care how crazy it may sound. I don't care how nonsensical it may appear. We need to learn to listen and obey the instructions of the Lord. It would have seemed like Elijah would have said, bring it to me and let me feel it. No, listen, God wants us to participate in our miracles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what this is. This is what God is saying. God wants us to participate. God wants us to listen to what he says. Then he wants us to obey what he says. L listen, he, he asked her to take the only thing she has left and then give it back to God. Her, her choice is to make, uh, she has a choice to make. Do I listen? Do I obey? Or do I continue to do what I've been doing? And do you know, my brothers and my sisters, when you listen and obey, you always come out on top. But when you decide to do it your way, you will continue to get the same results. When, listen, the woman had some, uh, she had some oil, she had a few vessels, but it, it didn't mean anything. It didn't produce anything. The blessing was going to come when she obeyed the instructions from the man of God. I, I wish I had some help out there. Listen, listen, listen. You circumstances consistently call into question the promises of God. Will God be able to do what he says he will do? Will God fulfill the promises that he says he will fulfill? When we look to our circumstances and allow them to dictate whether he will listen to God or not, we're going down the wrong path. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Stop looking and listening to your circumstances and start looking and listening to the Lord. 
The circumstance may not look like it can be possible, but we have to listen and obey the voice of God. If the woman would have looked at a circumstance, the circumstances said that there will not be a possibility of her paying her bills. The circumstances said there's a possibility her children would be taken from her. But, the, but when she listened and obeyed the power of God, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. God was able to get in the situation and do the impossible. I wish I had a witness in here. You do know a little in God's hand can become much. If you don't believe me, come here. You remember on the countryside after Jesus fed the 5,000 and it was teaching to the 5,000 and they wanted to know what do we have? Amen. They said all we have two fish and five loaves of bread. Amen. The Bible said Jesus said bring it here. He blessed it. He broke it and he gave it to them and after he finished feeding the 5,000. They had 12 baskets left over. A little in the Lord's hands can become a lot. We have to learn to obey the voice of God. I'm trying to help somebody. You may not have a whole lot, but when you put it in God's hands, when you learn to listen and obey God, God can make take a little and make a lot of it. I wish I had a witness. If you, you don't believe me. So some of y'all can remember your mama. Amen. She could take a little fly and take a little water and, amen, put a little meal together and feed seven or eight children. Amen. Amen. She can stretch some stuff. The same way your mama was able to take a little and feed a whole lot of children. Amen. You have to believe this morning that the same way God can do that in your situation, we have to learn to obey and listen and obey the voice of God in the text. And I'm closing, but in the text... The prophet Elijah tells the widow to go to her neighbors and borrow the empty vessels. Not just some of them, but get all of them. <laughs> That's a strange command. Can you imagine? Can, can you imagine the folk looking at her saying, what you going to do? What, what you going to do? What, what are you going to do with these vessels? Can, can, can you imagine? Can you imagine the answer? that she might have given, maybe she said, that crazy preacher told me to do this. Maybe she said, don't ask me why, but I, but I just need to borrow some empty jars, pots and pans. Uh, don't, don't ask me why I'm flat broke, but God is about to meet my need. I, I, I don't know how he's going to do it. But, but the man of God said, go borrow some pots. I don't understand it. But I know God is going to make a way. I want to stop right here. You may not understand how he's going to do it. You may not know when he's going to do it. You just have to believe he's going to do it. Am I preaching to anybody out there who, understand, who may not understand he's, how he's going to do it? You may not understand when he's going to do it, but your faith says he's going to do it. Are you listening to the voice of God right now? God says, hear him. Not only hear him, but God says, obey him. When you obey God, God can do some stuff. Do I have a witness in here? And you do know there are some times God may tell you to do some strange things. Come here, Abraham. God told Abraham, leave where you are. Where am I going, God? I, I'm not going to tell you, but if you just leave where, I'm, where you're going, where you are, I'm going to send you somewhere, and I'm going to bless you. And then not only am I going to bless you, but I'm going to bless the folk that bless you, and I'm going to curse the folk that curse you. When you obey God, and when you listen to God, God will bless you. Am I preaching to anybody out there? I am a witness when you listen to God and obey God. It may not be the kind of blessings that you think that you ought to get, but you are blessed. I am right here right now because I listen to the voice of God. I obey the voice of God. Amen. And I, I declare right here this day, right here in August the 9th, 2020, when you listen to God and obey God, Stop trying to do it your way. Stop trying to get around what God wants you to do. God will bless you. Uh, yeah, are you listening and obeying the voice of God? Yes, when you need a miracle, you need to ask God. You need to learn to listen and obey the voice of God. But th th there's one final thing, and I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. God, I'm going to bid you good day. I would tell you. 
I, I normally, if we were all together, I, I would tell you, have a good day. May the Lord bless you real good. On your way to Cracker Barrel, wherever you're going. But you're not going there today. On your way into the kitchen. On your way, amen, to, to the drive through or wherever you're going. But I, there's one more thing I want to tell you. And it's this. After you've answered, after you've asked, and you've listened and obeyed, then we have to trust God to do what we've asked him to do. My God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After you've asked God to, to, to do something in your life, after you've listened and obeyed, then you have to trust God to do that which you've asked him to do. Right, right here, verses 4 through 7. You, you read it. Verses 4 through 7. Uh, right, right here in the text. Uh, verses 4 through 7. Verses 4 through 7. Right here in the text. Then go to enter your house. This is Elisha talking with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask to the jars, setting each one aside when it is full. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of the sons. He's, there, there aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. Then she told the man of God what had happened, and he said to her, Now sell the olive oil and pay your debts. And you and your sons can live on what is left. My God, when you, when you ask God for a miracle and you listen and obey, then you got to trust, you got to trust God to do what you've asked him. Look, look at the text. She borrowed the vessels. She and her sons shut themselves up in the house. She trusted God to do what he promised. The woman and her sons fill the vessel one after another until each vessel they had borrowed was full. <laughs> she began that day with nothing, and she ended up with everything. That, that is what our God can do. God, you can end up with nothing. And I want to tell you, it's not how you start out, but it's how you end up. One of the lessons that we can learn from the text is that God will do exactly what he has promised. Elijah promised that the Lord would fill the vessels. Look at verse number four. And he did just that. He would keep all of his promises to you. Not a single word in a single promise will fall to the ground. God would do everything he has promised to do. He meant everything he said. He would do everything he's promised. Look at verse six. The oil flowed until the vessels ran out. Don't you miss that? The, the oil did not flowing because the oil ran out. The oil stopped flowing because the vessels ran out. You, you missed that. The, it, it, the oil didn't stop flowing because the oil ran out. The oil stopped flowing because the, the vessels ran out. When the day was gone, the every vessel was filled to the full. The, the, there, there was no limit on the amount of oil. The only limit was on the amount of vessels. I'm trying to help us out there. God's provision knows no limit in the widow's case. And I want to tell you, God's provision knows no limit in your case. God is able to meet every need. God is able to move every mountain. And God is able to solve every problem. His provision is limited by nothing but our faith. God stands ready to give all that you make room for him in your life. Listen, my brothers and sisters, as I take my seat, this, this leave here this morning, if you can trust him to take care of us, and if you can get our vessels under the flow of his oil, there's nothing that God cannot do. That's how Paul says, uh, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we ask or think. I close with this. I close with this. I, 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 there's a story that I came across a, a few years ago about two men who went down to a lake one morning to do some trout fishing. And they stayed there all day. But one man had a strange habit. Every time he would catch a trout, he would pull out a little ruler and he would measure the trout. 
if the trout measured larger than the ruler, he would throw it back. So strangely enough, he kept all the little trout that he caught and he threw back the big ones. Well, his fishing partner watched that all day long and he had all he could take. And as they got ready to leave, he, he said, I, I can't take it any longer. I, I have to know, I have to know, man, I, I, I got to know why is it that you kept all the small trout and you threw all the big ones back? The man said, I sure did. He said, why, why did you do that? The, his buddy said, because I only have an eight-inch frying pan. I'm, I'm going somewhere. <laughs> now, now, think about that. Rather than getting a bigger skillet, he was, he, he was settling for a smaller fish. My, my brothers and my sisters, I, this morning, I believe so often God wants to give us 12-inch blessings, but we only have a five, eight-inch faith. You will get that later on. God wants to give us 12-inch blessings, but some of us only have eight-inch faith. I, listen, my brothers and my sisters, some of us, amen, God wants to bless us exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or think, but we keep throwing the blessings back because we don't have the capacity to grasp them. Uh, as I close, as I close in the text, when the day was done, there was enough oil in those borrowed vessels to settle the widow's debt, meet her desires, and her needs. I, I want to tell you uh, that there is no secret what God can do. I, I wonder, is there anybody out there this morning who has a need? I wonder, is there anybody out there who needs a miracle? I wonder, is there anybody out there who's struggling to make it? I wonder, is there anybody out there who's trying to hang on? I wonder, is there anybody out there who don't know what to do? I want to tell you, there is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. He may not do it for you like he did it for this woman, but I'm a witness. He will do it for you. Hang on in there. Don't you give up. Keep asking. Keep listening. Keep obeying and keep trusting. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Is there anybody out on Facebook? Is there anybody out there on live stream? Is there anybody out there on YouTube who believes that the Lord will come through for you? He may not show up when you want him, but he'll be right there on time. Is there anybody out there who tried my Jesus? Is there anybody out there who knows he will make a way somehow? And they all, won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? If you need a miracle, keep asking. If you need a miracle, keep listening. If you need a miracle, keep obeying and keep trusting because he will never fail you yet. For we've come this far by faith leaning and depending on the Lord. Yeah, if you need a miracle, how many of you out there today need the Lord to do something in your life? I, I, I extend to you an opportunity of salvation today. We're done. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. I, I, I need to know today, if you need the Lord to do something for you, keep asking, keep trusting, keep believing. Keep listening, keep obeying, and believe that God can do what he can do. God will do. Listen, there is no shortage in God. The oil ran out because the vessels ran out. D listen, G God can do. We have to have the capacity to receive and believe what God can do. De listen, listen, just believe that God can do all things but fail. The woman had a need. She asked she listened, she obeyed, regardless of how silly, nonsensical it may be. Amen. And listen and obey and then trust God to do what you've asked him to do. Watch God work. <laughs> Watch God work. He may not work like he did for this woman and others in the Bible, but he'll work it for you. Watch God work. God, the door, an opportunity of salvation extended. If you don't have a church home, I would love to be your pastor. We can, we can come. I don't know when we're going to get back into the building, but I would love to be your pastor. I will take you in now. Uh, I've, I've got to call someone this week who, who has who's inquired about church membership. I'm going to talk to you this week. I got your information. I'm going to contact you this week, uh, and just we're going to have a conversation.
conversation. There may be others um, who want to unite with us and let become a part of this fellowship. We would love to have you. I would love to be your pastor. Um, again, we want to pray with you. you. May come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism. We want to come back and restore your uh, membership through this church. We will not ask you where you've been. We just want to. We want to just fellowship with you. We want to restore you. Listen, listen. You have to trust God. I don't know what your situation is today, but listen. You have to believe. <laughs> Listen and obey. Listen and obey and trust God. If you're going to pray, trust God to meet that need. He may, and listen, he may not answer it right away when you want him, but you have to trust and obey. You have to listen and obey and trust God that he's going to answer your prayer. I want to pray with you this morning. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. If you desire to uh, have prayer, you may, you may write it uh, um, on the Facebook um, page here. You may just real quick type it in. If you desire prayer, you may just say, yes, I desire prayer. You don't have to be specific about it. I, you may say, I need prayer. I'm going to give you a few moments to just type it in. I, I can't see it on live stream, but you can just type it in. Uh, just say, I need prayer real quick. Just pray with me, Pastor. Just pray with me, Pastor. You may just pray with me, Pastor. You may do that real quick, real quick. You just pray with me, Pastor. Just say that real quick. If you know that, if you desire prayer, you may just, just ask right quick. Just type it in. We're going to pray with you. Again, thank you, media team. Thank all of you for tuning in today. We're going to pray with you real quick. I'm going to pray if you desire prayer. I'm going to pray with you real quick. Just type it in real quick. Give you a moment to type it in. Give you a moment to type it in. Again, give you a moment to type it in if you desire your prayer. If you desire your prayer, I'll give you a moment to type it in as we prepare to close. I'm going to pray with you. Pray with you, brothers and sisters. I pray with you. <clears throat> I'm going to pray with you. Folks are, yes, we need prayer. Yeah, 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 come on. The, he's able. He's a prayer. We, I, I believe that. If you believe and you desire your prayer, I'm going to pray with you pray with you. Make your request known unto him. I want to just pray with you. I want to pray with you real quick. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Yes, desire prayer. Come on in. Let's pray. It's an altar prayer. We're going to have our, we, 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 this is our family member altar prayer, our friends altar prayer. We would normally do this in the middle of our service, but, but listen, listen, we're, we're going to have this prayer. We're going to connect even over Facebook. We're going to connect even over live stream. Connect right in your homes. I want to just connect with you. I want to connect with you right now. I want to connect with you. I want to connect with you. I want to connect with you right now. I'm connecting with you right now. We're connecting right now. We're connecting right now. I want you to just connect right now. Let your, cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. We're connecting right now. We're going to pray for our college students. We're going to pray for our students who are getting ready to transition back to school, parents, and we're just going to pray. We're praying for our senior members, our seasoned saints in our church. We're praying right now. We're praying for all over. We're praying for our country. We're praying for COVID-19 victims. We're praying for families who are struggling with unemployment and, and who, who lost their unemployment benefits. We're praying right now for folk without health care in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis. We're praying right now. We're praying. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come right now, God, lifting up my brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father, they're standing in the need of a blessing. We're standing in the need of prayer. Thank you, God, for these mediums by which you provided for us to pray even though we're not physically together. We can pray through over the telephone. We can pray uh, over live stream. We can pray over Facebook. God, we pray right now. We connect right now. God, we know, God, that you are everywhere at the same time. Heavenly Father, we touch and agree with our brothers and our sisters. Touch them right now. Touch, heal, and deliver right now. Some are confused. Some are worried about their finances. Some are worried about their children. Some are worried about just situations, God. Some are worried about their bodies and, and becoming infected by COVID-19. We just pray, God, that you would just give us peace, God, in the midst of all of this confusion. God, we're living in, uh, we're living in some strange times, God. Things are happening, God, that we never thought could happen, God. But we know, God, things are uncertain certain, but you are certain, God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So, God, just have your way. Just bless us, God. Every person that's under the sign of my voice, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our transgressions.
questions. God, we're not perfect, but we thank you, God, that you bless us, that you keep us, you sustain us. Bless every family. Bless every household. Bless jobs. And God, just continue to sustain us. Bless our church. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the Falling Wind Church. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Bless each person, God. Bless children. Just bless us and keep us in your care. We love you. We praise you and adore you. Now unto him who's so able to keep us from falling. And one day, God, you're going to present us faultless before your mighty throne in glory. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us henceforth, now and forevermore. Let us all say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Love you. See you later. God bless you. God bless you. Be, go in peace, my brothers and sisters. Go in peace until we see each other again. Love you. Thank you. God bless you.